Hello everyone, this is Yusai. Welcome to Let's Talk. And today is a special edition of Let's Talk as we're celebrating Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And I had to bring someone that have inspired me so much over the years. He is a war winning chef, celebrity chef, who's been on TV for as long as I remember watching American television when I moved to the United States. And this is my guest today, Chef Ming Sai. How are you? I'm great, Yusai. How are you, man? Great to great to be with you. Well, I'm so excited to have you here today because I think during this crazy time, I find that it's so important for us to pay some gratitude and say thank you to people who have inspired us over time and continue to inspire us in different ways of you giving to the community. So we're going to talk all about that today. For number one, thank you for being such an amazing representation over the year as an Asian face that when I turn on my television, I remember 25 years ago that I saw you on the show called East Meets West on Food Channel and it was yep. the only place I could find someone with the same last name as me and, <laughs> and someone who looked at me and spoke perfect English, by the way, and I couldn't even speak <laughs> English. And so I learned English through you and, and, and I just wanna say thank you. I don't know you know how much <laughs> impact that has on so many of Asians and, and, and others out there from different areas and immigrants that come to the United States and trying to carve a uh, business in the entertainment industry. Yeah, thank you. I so appreciate that. Um, perfect English, I, I would have to beg to differ, but pretty good English. Yeah, I'm I, not bad. <laughs> it, it was awesome. So give us a little bit of history. How did you end up on TV and cooking on TV? You know, um, like you, we have parents and grandparents that cooked, right? You could be Mexican, you could be Italian, you could be Jewish, you could be Chinese, Japanese. All of our parents and grandparents cooked because why? The only main reason to gather is food, right? Yes. So if you learn how to cook well, your family keeps coming back to the table because there's good food. I, I don't know what would happen if my parents were not good cooks, honestly. I probably, would not, I probably wouldn't know them very well, to be perfectly blunt. So as a kid, literally, when I was um, two years old, when I could walk, I would gravitate towards the kitchen because I was, still, still am, and will always be hungry. So <laughs> I learned at an early age, if you hang out in the kitchen, yeah, yeah, nine, they're going to throw you some scraps. And, and that's how I ended up being in the kitchen. Plus the smoke and the smell and the noise and the chopping, all that was just like, oh, this looks so cool. Um, fast forward to, so I, I've been, you know, I trained in Paris, as you know, I trained in Japan and Osaka. And, and I, I, I'll tell you the first story. My parents, of course, are both Chinese. And if you've mm -hmm. seen East Meets West, you've seen my mom and dad who are awesome cooks, still are. My dad's 90, my mom's 85. My dad, wow. my dad still works full time. I mean, talk about an inspiration. He lives in Honolulu now with mom and, and he's developing a new double-double patent pending graphite lamination that is working with NASA and stuff like that. Just to remind you, that's, those are my awesome parents there. And, and my mom still makes fun that my dumplings aren't very pretty. So, you know, that, that, because she's, she's nine, right? So nothing changes. Um, so as you know, I, I'm in college studying mechanical engineering, right? And, uh, but the first summer, I, had, I ha already had French through high school. And high school wow. French was not nearly fluent, but I was decent enough to say like, bonjour, au revoir, that's about it. And I really wanted to go to Paris to cook because I'm thinking... Well, I got the Chinese not quite down, but I have a good foundation in Chinese food. The other best cuisine in the world is French cuisine. Now, of course, Morimoto-san and Nobu-san would not agree with that. All the Italian chefs and all, they won't agree with that. But Jose Andres wouldn't agree with this. But in the, in the tome of cuisines, French and Chinese were the two first major ones, right? And so I'm like, I'm going to go to so much about technical technical details and a hundred percent and a lot of it i think for me as an artist i feel like those are the two cuisines that truly plates beautifully because there's yeah. so much colors and 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 tell stories those two cuisines yeah. really a hundred percent and i also knew that uh, as soon as i got to france i'm like okay well let's learn french first and so i went to alice francaise and i and i and by living in france you become fluent very quickly it's just how i learned my chinese by going to taipei all the time as a kid which, and that's my hometown. Right, I am. Uh, we thought that. Uh, gosh, Ximing Ding, baby. Best. Sonia you been the best. And so every summer I started going back to Paris. We had my dad's, one of my dad's partners, Thierry Massard, who I'm now the godfather of their first son, Sebastian. So very tight family friends. 
I had a free place to stay in Paris, which is just so, so unbelievable. So I did a apprenticeship. I learned French and I started working at Fauchon, uh, which is one of the premier pastry houses in the world. Pierre Hermé, uh, still a friend. He he's just crushes it with his macaroons and glasses and everything. I came back after the junior year summer and I had to sit my parents down. I'm, I'm almost done with my major, right? I mean, I was, I'm going to do engineering because my doctor, uh, I, I had the option of being a doctor, a lawyer, engineer, right? Those are the, that was one of my rules for my parents. A second rule for my parents was get any grades you want as long as it's straight A's. And my <laughs> third rule was marry anyone you want. If they're Chinese, we prefer that. So I'm 0 for 3. I mean, I struck out across the board. Uh, my wife, who is Caucasian, speaks fluent Chinese. So there's that at least. Uh, and by the way, as a side note, we did the stupidest thing ever. We made our kids learn Chinese. Now my wife and I can't have a secret language and talk to each other. We'll be like, E1, my son's like $10,000. I'm like, oh, shoot, no, you speak Chinese. So, so we kind of blew that one. So I'm telling my wife to learn French, just to you know, give us another language. But I came back that summer. I had to sit him down. And keep in mind, I'm first generation, right? My dad, my grandfather went to Yale, 1918, right? And that was to learn something and, 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 and to do any job that maybe wasn't a cook because – Back in the day, when the Chinese first immigrated here, right, there was the railroads. We built the railroads. There was the gold rush. When that all evaporated, the only skill that most Chinese men knew how to do was cook. They didn't have the language, so they couldn't be like, oh, I'm going to go into business. Well, you can't if you don't speak English. So hence, cooking was a métier. So here I go to an Ivy League and do all this stuff, and I want to become a cook. So it's kind of a little ass backwards, right? But yeah, it didn't matter. It was my passion. <laughs> Yeah, right. they, were, they were having a heart attack. Oh, that, but you know what? And if you've seen my parents, the one thing they actually are, they are very cool, right? They were, they, they knew, and this is what I tell my kids, follow your passion. You're only going to be great at something that you want and love to do. So I sat him down. I remember this. I came back. I'm sitting in my apartment like, mom, dad, I want to be a chef. I'm going to finish the degree. I'm going to get my get my diploma. Don't worry, because you just wasted X tens of thousands of dollars of getting the diploma. So I did graduate. I got my bachelor's, mechanical engineering, which I'm very proud of. But I said, I'm going to go to Paris, and I want to cook for a living. And my mom, who's so boy, gives me a huge hug, says, oh, son, you're so lucky. At your young age, you know your passion. Just promise you give 110%. We support you all the way. Wow. And I look at dad, who's much more pensive. Again, he's a literally rocket scientist. Your son... You weren't going to be a very good engineer anyway. Go cook. I'm like, wow. I'm like, oh, you stabbed me. But he was right. I mean, you know, did I get straight A's in engineering at Yale? Hell no. No, no, no. My motto is actually D is for diploma. And that's what we got. We got the diploma. So, so then I, was, I never looked back. So then, so then I started, once I went to France that time, I lived there for a year and a half. And that's when I first said, I want to do Chinese cuisine. Thank God that name never caught. French, Chinese, Chinese. Horrible name. But the idea was, how can I blend the amazing techniques and ingredients of both Western and Eastern world? And that's how East meets West came in. My first goal, incidentally, was learn how to make desserts. Because us Chinese, we're really bad on desserts. And that's not because we're not skilled. It's actually because back in the day, there was no milk and cream in China. So without milk and cream as a base for your pastries, right? Because, you know, so many Chinese, how many millions, billions are lactose intolerant? It's because of that, right? So... Anyway, that's how right East Meets West started. <laughs> yeah, are you? Oh, I'm sorry. And you get the blush or not? You get the alcohol no. blush? No, I don't thank get the God. Alcohol blush, but I, oh my God, that'd be so bad. Eight thirty in the morning, being blush already, you know. <laughs> but what's what's some, what's amazing that since we're celebrating about the Asian culture and the, being yeah. in America, that the, the the generation gap, the struggle of the generation gap when we first generation immigrants being here, that we all seem to to, to have that similar um, uh, uh, path where our parents strive us to be the best we can so we can survive because they work really hard to get to get to this country you know my yeah. my, my dads have a similar path and we have kind of similar a very very parallel life actually because my father was a photographer in taiwan and when he moved to the united states because of language barrier there was nothing else he could do he could not be a photographer we live in terry Hill, indiana there was nobody Ooh. spoke Chinese, other than my uncle, who happened to be a, a exchange student who got his visa and, and then he immigrated us here. And and so only thing he had to do was work at my uncle's restaurant. And right. you start at the dishwashing. You yeah. have, that's what you do. We and all did. Doing, and all was doing the summer. And as a good Asian boy that I wasn't, but 
We get dragged <laughs> into the kitchen with your dad. You know, yeah. you go into the kitchen and you try to learn English, but little did my dad know nobody spoke English in the kitchen. They're all speaking Spanish. So <laughs> that didn't help <laughs> yeah. my English at all. But but I did learn how to wash dishes and eventually learn how to butcher a chicken. And 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 a funny story I love to tell is that I don't know why white people love broccoli and beef so much because I never had it when I was in Asia. But we learn how to break down our broccoli and that's what we need to do the most. Peel off that thick skin on the outside. Yeah, yeah. Every day with that little paring little knife and just breaking down the broccoli and beef. Is love great. it. Love them. <laughs> so that was well, this is way. great because I, 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 I'm an avid amateur photographer, right? And no one's ever paid a dime for my stuff. But I love shooting. So one day I'm going to shoot you cooking. That's going to oh be perfect. Oh my God. That is the most amazing. Who's saying hi? Who's saying hi? That, that is Buddy saying hi to someone. I have no idea who that is. And uh, and Buddy doesn't have an agent. This is really against SAG rules. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> my mine's in the other room right now. She snores. Yeah, she does French bulldogs. So all she does is snore. Sometimes she snores by my feet so loud. People are like, what is that sound? I'm like, my dog's snoring. Don't worry. But but David, it, someone's it, outside, dude. But what's crazy is amazing is that your parents actually was able to embrace your new journey. And that's really different and from most, a lot of them. I think now the kids have it better. I'm sorry, I sound old when I said that, guys, for the Asian out there, that you guys have right. it better. You get to choose and you get, but it is really rare to be able to say to your kids, all right, we suffer, but go ahead, good luck. But you got lucky, you were horrible in engineering, right? That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a strong suspicion that you were horrible engineering on purpose so that you <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, okay I wasn't horrible <laughs> but <laughs> but I would I would fly my father's plane not my plane that I designed put it that way <laughs> wow that's incredible that's incredible but then then you know at that time there was nobody on TV that was Asian except yeah. I think. Yen Kun Cook was already. Yeah, Martin was on. There was Frugal Gourmet. Martin Yen was the only Asian for besides, literally besides Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, and then of course all the kung fu movies. Yeah, there was Dan and Bookum Deno, right? I mean, there was a Hawaii Five O, and that that was it. How and, did you uh, break in? How did you were able to get into? The yeah, it, you know what? It's uh, and I don't know if it was Oprah or Eckhart Tolle, whoever said it first, but but you you're not born lucky. If you work hard, you get lucky. That I believe, right? I mean, some people are born DNA, trust fund baby. I guess they're lucky. But but as I always remark and notice, none of my friends that are trust fund babies are actually very happy, right? Because they never had to work for, you know, 17 years old, getting you know, however much money they're getting. They just never worked. And so I don't think that's, you know, like my kids, they're not getting a trust fund. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'll give you a knife and here's a cutting board, but no trust fund. Oh, no. They're watching right now and they're oh, yeah. so... They're going to come out. They're, they're like, oh, I got to get AIDS now. Yeah. So, so you know, I'm working. How old are your kids? Uh, so David's 20. Uh, and he's a freshman. Freshman at Yale, very proudly. He plays squash at Yale, which is awesome. And Henry just graduated. And I feel so bad when graduating senior from high school. He had the lead male role for Rent. He's a big singer and dancer. And he didn't get to do that. Of course, no graduation, no prom. Wow. It's just so... It's so tough on high school senior. College seniors, I know you want a graduation, but you, at least you had your high school graduation. To not get that is just, you know, we're going to do something in a car and we're going to drive by, but that's not, you know. And, and, and we're so bummed because he's so good at singing and dancing to see him in Rent, which is a, one of the Same premier kind of, of all musicals, you know. So, but, but he's, he's smart. He gets it. He's like, you know, I, I get it. It's not no one's fault, right? Um, we could blame one person, maybe, but no, it's not really anyone's fault. And, um, uh, and he's mature enough to say, you know what, this is, this is the card, the cards I've been dealt. My wife and dad, uh, not my wife, my, my mother and dad are safe. My brother's safe. We have a house. Uh, we're not going to end up homeless like so many other people right now in this country. It's just, it's, it's, it's so horrific what's going on. But let me finish your first question and we can get into stuff going on now. So I was at Santa Cafe. I was executive chef at Santa Cafe in Santa Fe. This is my first exec chef job. This is 90, I got married in 95. So this is 95, 96. And there was something called the Food Network that just launched. Mm. And they were they came to New Mexico and there was a show that Nina Griskin, Nina Griskin and Alan Richmond had called Dining Around, right? It was a great show, three chefs for half an hour. Turned out, which I didn't know, it was their talent search show to see if there's any chef out there that actually had had that, you know, je ne sais quoi for camera. And and as you can pretty much tell, I'm kind of a smart ass. And, and I remember 
<laughs> the first thing I ever said on TV, the camera's right in my face. And I'm, and I'm doing a lamb dish. I'm like, hey, my name is Ming Tsai. I, I, I was born Chinese and, and I'm still Chinese. And today I'm cooking lamb. And the producer actually laughed. And it's like, oh my God, this guy actually tried to crack a joke. It wasn't that funny, but at least he had the confidence to try a joke. And, and honestly, I did love doing it because I always loved teaching, right? It's all about mm. teaching squash or skiing and now teaching cooking. And, and I, I, I enjoyed, of course, I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed that attention, that limelight. And I enjoyed the fact that I knew that this food network is probably going to take off because everyone likes food. Every culture likes food. Um, you know, Emil had his first show and I became their Asian expert, right? So whenever they said, hey, man, can you come in and do dumplings? Like, boom. And this is all on my own dime. I would fly in, wow. Chinese New Year, of course, big celebration for us. I'd fly in, I'd do it. And then finally, the same producer, Marilyn O'Reilly, pulled me aside one day and says, look, you, you have the skill, you have the skill set. If you get a little bit of media training, I think we can get you your own show. And that's how it started. And I did this one uh, two day media training just in Western Massachusetts. It cost like $3,000. I mean, my wife and I had probably $4,000 in our bank account at that time, right? But she also knew, she's like, you know what? I, I, think, I think you are good at this. I think do it and I think it'll be a smart move. So I did the media training and, and you know, learn how to make things seamless. You never say, Oh, and for the magic television oven, here's your lamb. No, you put your <laughs> lamb in and say, after 30 minutes, look how beautifully brown it is. So exactly. all those kind of tricks of the trade. Um, and then I, and as you know, I still love doing it. I mean, I, I, I love to be able to teach. And especially now during what's going on in this pandemic, um, I'm busy as hell, right? Because you can now, I'm doing actually the best cooking class possible for, for certain people, which is you get to cook with me. So I send people boxes and cooler of food that I have exactly. And then in 20 minutes or 30 minutes, we cook and you have a meal. So it's the cooking show that you wish always existed. Because when I watch cooking shows, I'm like, oh, I wish I could eat that. Well, now in this time, you can't. So that's, that's, actually, been, that's actually been fun in this chaos. Well, before we jump into that, I have one more question about this, because it's so important that for somebody on the other side of the camera watching you on TV, you know, and we question, how can we do that? And we question ourselves. We look in the mirror and say, well, uh, uh, are the American audience going to accept the Asian person? I can say that I questioned that for over 20 years in this business. Even as a photographer, I questioned, are they going to hire me because I'm Asian? Because it's just something that right. is in our blood. That, uh, whether I, I now as older and more mature that no longer do I use that as excuse of not yeah. getting work. I understand now that there are multi layers of reasoning, um, yeah. but I just want to make sure, and I always check myself, is the right reason? Is it the reason that I'm Asian or not Asian? And it took it took time to get right. comfortable with our skin. And but having you on TV, having you up there and on HSN, on everything you've done publicly, not just on one show, you were across so many different shows and winning the Emmy. That moment was so resounding for me, and I remember and I chose thinking about it because that was the moment I said, I, I want one of those trophies. I, I want to work yep. hard and and no, I can't give excuse, give myself excuses anymore that because I'm Asian because somebody else is doing it. So I know that sentiment is across the board with so many people that that watches you on TV. So we thank you for that. We thank you. For oh, Champions you're quite well. Yeah, the, I'll tell you a funny story. So one of my agent called me and says, hey, you've been nominated for an Emmy. Of course, I knew what an Emmy was. I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> and this is my first year. Right. I just started East yes. Meets West. And apparently the first show I did ever on East Meets West was a show they submitted. Right. Which wow. I'm like, really? You don't want me to get a little. They submitted this turkey shoe my show. I remember the whole show. And, and he said, he says, by the way, it's you, Martha Stewart, Julia Child, uh, bra, Science Sky, Nye. Um, I'm like, oh, well, it's great to be nominated. I'm like, there's no chance I'm going to win this thing. And then there I was. At the, at, we were in New York City. And they, I'm like, did they say Ming Tsai? I mean, couldn't. I mean, I had absolutely no speech prepared. There was no, I mean, like, there's no way I'm winning this. Right? And, uh, and Martha still hasn't sent me flowers. And congratulations. I'm a little bit hurt. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, yeah. I mean, to me, that was the, and the, the, the reason I was so proud. I was so proud of that. It was the Food Network's first Emmy. Mm. Right. They've been around for about two and a half years. And 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 to say that helped catapult my career would be an understatement. I mean, that uh, was just uh, it, it, that was. And, and I was so proud to be Chinese American. I always say I'm Chinese American. I'm not American Chinese. Right. I'm 100 percent blood Chinese. Both my parents born in Beijing. But 
but I was born in Newport Beach, California. So I'm definitely American. So I'm equally proud. People ask me, are you more American or Chinese? I'm like, I'm perfectly 50-50 down the middle, guys. I'm proud to be American, but I'm proud to be Chinese too. But the Chinese had better food. So let's leave yeah. it at that. <laughs> well, well, thank you for embracing that because a lot of us growing up, we had to learn to love our own skin because I know there's a period of time that I'm like, I'm not Chinese, I'm American. I'm born here and you try to get away. I mean, a good example is this, that we try to get away, you know, run away from our heritage. I remember when I was younger, when we moved to the United States, my mom, it would make um, fan tuan, you know, rice bowls yeah. for lunch yeah, yeah. for us. And we bring yeah. it to school because every oh, single, yeah. every single kid at school, like, oh my God, what are you eating a bowl of rice in the ball? And then you get mock right. up and you go home like, mom, I never want to eat rice again. Don't ever give me rice again. Oh. Then she'll pack lunch and she boiled the chicken just in water. You know how we eat Hanan yeah. chicken? It's yeah, just, yeah. Dip in hot water with ginger and all these herbs. And then when you're eating it, you look like you're eating a raw chicken. Boy, was that the crazy bully and teasing again at lunchtime. Then you come home like, I just want peanut butter sandwich, mom. I don't want right. any, or I don't want to eat anything. I don't want. But you know what? Now I have turned into my parents. When I travel, I travel with a rice cooker. Ah, yes, and nice. when I go to hotels, I plug it in and I cook my rice. I love it. And, and you know, it's seriously. Oh, you can't. You a Chinese person. Cannot have a complete day without a bowl of rice. It's no. like the French can't ha can't live without a baguette. The Italians can't live without focaccia. I'm same thing. So I had that same. So you know, I'm in Dayton, Ohio. We were neighbors growing up. So I'm in Dayton, Ohio. You're in Indiana, and my mom, same thing. We'd have a thermos of of yeah. hong, hong juro, so red rose oh. pork with rice, right? But but and, and certainly no offense to your mom, but when this got opened up, it smelled so good, right? That sweet soy and star anise and cinnamon, and people would gather like, what's that? And I actually, because I had the confidence of, of, of saying, oh, this is delicious, right? We just say it. Didn't know if they wanted it or not. <laughs> I would barter. I would give half of it away because people thought that was so delicious. And I would come home sometimes with a peanut butter jelly sandwich and a, and a cheese sandwich. And my mom's like, where are these folks? Well, this is a barter. So I, I made two sandwich profit. <laughs> so. Well, that's amazing. Well, with the transition that's going on and, and being who you are today, and you'll continue to make influences and inspire others. With Blue Dragon restaurants in Boston and through all this time, I want to talk about how you're pivoting and how you're still yeah. making sure that you're out there and supporting the community. Community. And we have a big fundraiser coming up uh, to on Saturday and Sunday, and I'll be tuning in. So let's start talking about Blue Dragon a little bit about how the impact has been and how are you awesome. pivoting at this time. So uh, another fellow Asian, Ed Lee, Korean, um, lives in Kentucky, and he started something called the Lee Initiative. Uh, he very smartly, uh, he very smartly one drank bourbon, and two because of how much bourbon he drank, became great friends with Makers Mark in Kentucky. <laughs> And, that, and that's pivotal. Because of his relationship with Makers Mark, he said, hey, look, right now you, you have promotional money for every major city in the country because normally you do your, up, your upfronts, your gatherings, your promos. And they're like, yeah, we do. He goes, well, you can't do that, right? You can't gather. So whatever those tens and thousands of dollars in each city, give it to me instead, and I will seed a restaurant in every major city and make their restaurant convert it to a food pantry. And wow. so Ed called me from Boston. I'm like, Ed, that's awesome. Because I, I was literally at a crossroads what to do. Because we were obviously closed. And then we opened for to go no contact, less than 10% of revenue. So you don't need an engineering degree to realize you're not going to survive at 10% revenue. And so because of this seed money, we got enough to open for two weeks as a food pantry, right? This is eight weeks ago. And but they said, look, but if you can get out there like you can and raise your own money and get food donations and get donations from corporations, continue as long as you can. And they they, they and because of that, we fundraise it with Lee's initiative. We're in our eighth week right now as a food pantry, and we're specifically feeding restaurant employees. The restaurant industry has been disseminated. I mean, the 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 numbers are staggering. The 50% of all Chinese and Chinese American restaurants will be closed at the end of this. 50%, think about that. They're claiming 50 to 70 of all mom and pop restaurants are gonna be closed. I mean, that's a cultural disaster. Forget about all of us are gonna lose our shirts, but just as a culture, where, where do we all gather? Where do we celebrate and where do we go after something's really horrible? It's a restaurant, it's a bar. And, and so we have to keep these alive and thank God we have some amazing chefs that were just on the hill lobbying a $120 billion bill to fund these restaurants because if they go, they're gone. And in this industry, as you know, 50% or so are, are here, pay taxes, but they're not legal. 
Right. Same for landscapers, same for anyone in the service industry. That's hotel, that's restaurants, that's everyone. And the travesty is, even though they pay taxes, they're not getting a dime from unemployment or any bailouts. So their last check was my $1,000 bonus I gave them eight weeks ago. And they have nowhere to go. You know, a lot of us can just go home to mom and dad. Well, they send money home to mom and dad. So they can't just leave the country because they never can come back. And it's just this, it's, it's what literally, I was not sleeping for about three weeks because I couldn't get out of my head. Plus one of my cooks just had a brand new baby too, right? Oh my and we're goodness. just like, how do you, how do you get through this? How do you, how do you pay rent and pay food if there's no money? And unfortunately, most people, half of this country have $500 or less in their bank account. So that's one paycheck. And we're eight weeks, 10 weeks into this thing. So, you know, hats off to the Ed Leaves of the World to do the lead initiative. So we're, we are feeding three to 400 now people a day uh, through a food truck in East Boston, because there is where all, all my people, my cooks and dishwashers that live in East Boston, were too scared to even come to Blue Dragon because you can't take the tea. It's too dangerous. You can't take an Uber because you don't know who's in the Uber before you. So they weren't coming for the food. I'm like, you guys, you got to come. It's just we're scared, chef. So then I luckily hooked up with Jamaican Me Hungry, a very cool Jamaican restaurant, uh, Ernie Campbell's restaurant. He had a food truck. He's let me use his food truck. I pay for the gas, and we've been doing this for eight weeks now. And uh, so that, that's been the great pivot for Blue Dragon. I have no idea what I'm going to do with Blue Dragon because when we reopen, June 7th is the new new date here in Boston. That doesn't mean you open the doors and there's customers, right? It, it's, it's, and by the way, am I going to Zoom to a restaurant myself when it opens up? I'm not so sure. I don't know if I want to be served by someone with a mask and gloves and plexiglass. And the only thought is, am I going to get sick? Am I going to get sick? Right. You, you've seen the thing in, in the Chinese news and, you know, believe it or not, but how the HV air conditioning system can actually get someone sick 40 feet away. So it doesn't matter that you're six feet away from someone. It can get in the AC unit. And by the way, the difference of going to a beach outdoors don't be downwind by the way think about that do not be downwind to someone because you can catch it but if you're sitting for an hour and a half next to someone asymptomatic for an hour and a half you are increasing your chances of getting sick and is it worth it and so that that's such a dilemma for me and every chef owner right now because we I, just don't know and we know that restaurant restaurant businesses and then people come for the experience it's not just for the delicious foods not just 100 it's about the atmosphere that you created yeah. for them people have memories there and then that's that's why these places are so special are you able to then convert and pivot into a pure pickup service and still be able to provide some kind of experience for your new customers you think yeah i mean again like i said earlier <clears throat> so be because of simply being in my shows, uh, unfortunately, I have a following. And so the so I'm offering a blue ginger, uh, blue dragon, blue ginger is my old restaurant, a blue dragon experience uh, by cooking with you. So that's not quite the restaurant experience, but so many people like yourself, everyone, by the way, everyone in this country cooks. Some are just better than others, right? <laughs> but everyone can cook. Everyone can burn toast or not burn toast. And so by providing at least my food and my, and my teachings, I, I continue to do that. But for Blue Dragon proper, it's just, you know, right now, it's, we're in the Seaport District, which is the, like the newest, highest growing area. And so we're not a neighborhood yet. We have, I don't know, 4,000, 5,000 people there. But for you to survive as a restaurant in a neighborhood, you need to have that 100 or 200,000 people around you. And so we're, we're trying to figure out how to do it. Again, we're doing this to go, but just it's, there's, it's such a challenge. People, people are scared. And, and by the way, let's keep in mind, people are also running out of money. So if you're running out of money, the last place you're going to is a restaurant, right? Because, you know, for $200, you can feed a family of four for an entire week if you're cooking yourself easily. But that's, you know, that's, that's two meals out in a restaurant. And that's, that's, it's just, it's literally been the perfect storm and not, not a good storm. The perfect storm of the, by the way, our economy was already teetering on disaster right. before COVID hit. Just think about that. Um, I hope, I hope the good that will come out of this, you've seen a lot of acts of kindness, right? You've seen individuals and corporations and groups of people coming together. And, and that's all I've been saying in all my interviews is be kind because be kind. right now, there's three types of people in this world today. You're either, and by the way, so it's not skin color, sexual preference, political affiliation. It's none of that. You're either healthy, infected, or dying. That's, That's it. it. So the guy on your right and left are the only two people that are one of those three. Hopefully you and I are the two who are healthy, and that's, right. thank God I'm healthy. But 
you have to take care of the ones that are unhealthy because we are all humans. There's no more anything besides we're all humans and we have to get through this because we're humans. And so I, I hope I, the kindness curve keeps like this because that's, that's what's going to make it. And it's, it, I'm so happy for you to hear to say that because I've been echoing this concept that we've been telling everybody to stay six feet apart. And that six feet distance is a mountain, the same distance that you need to spread your kindness and behave like the virus is doing. The virus is spreading in six feet fast. You can do the same with your kindness yeah. with six feet people around you. It really starts with your community around you. I know there's a lot of global yeah. initiative, but you've got to support your local lo local restaurants. And and that's yeah. the reason I even started Let's Talk. It's really good the community talking. And we try to dedicate every Tuesday on the food industry, small restaurants, local restaurants that, that convert the, the restaurant to pantries or bodegas yeah. so people can still have some kind of experience. And and I'm learning so much about the trickle down effect that it's not just the service people at the restaurant, the farmers that and, oh, and, and we talk fisheries, about fisheries, creameries, the linen yeah. people, the garbage my dad's people. A, my, a lot of people don't know my dad's a mushroom farmer and passion fruit farmer. And this this year and the restaurant people know passion fruit did not do well this year because the, the just the environmental uh changing of the climate and and we don't talk about climate change but it's because of that mushroom didn't do well so, but it does uh, exist <laughs> yes the passion fruit didn't do well so we rely on the mushrooms but the mushroom again during this time it's really if you don't have oyster mushrooms are considered high-end expensive mushrooms that yep. means high-end restaurants are customers right high-end yep. high-end stores are customers who's yep. buying oyster mushrooms no, no so one. that could we start seeing that trickle down in fact all the way to 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 the core of our family. And then I even had a conversation with my brother this morning. I said, what do we do? He goes, well, we cut the production down and but it'll take time to ramp back up. So I am trying to right now start an initiative with him. I said, you guys go full ramp by my restaurant. Let's get these oyster mushrooms that nobody wants to buy. Let's create an initiative to get to chefs, create meals for others with these mushrooms that most people don't even get to experience. And let's educate people that no, oyster mushrooms are quite kind of amazing and delicious. One of my favorite. Oh, they're you awesome. Know? You know, so I, I love so that. Yeah, and by the way, people, I uh, some people know most need to know that mushrooms are one of the best immune enhancing food you can eat. I mean, food is medicine. Us Chinese and Asians have known that for centuries, right? And you need to build your immune system. And mushrooms are by far one of the best things that we should all be eating every day. I take a maitake mushroom prune every day and knock on wood. I never get sick. Pre-COVID, I never got sick. And I travel as much as you probably. I travel a lot, uh, but I never got sick because mushrooms just build your immune system. So well, good I, on you. I would, I'd love to help you out with that. I, I can help. Uh, we'll I love oysters. I love all mushrooms. So what I want to talk a little bit about Simply Mean, because it really is a true transition into the family reach of mission that you're doing. And for those of you guys out there, just join us. I'm talking to a mean side celebrity chef who's doing amazing work, giving back to the community, inspiring so many agents out there. And one of the things that, that people don't realize, you have one of the most longest running food show on TV, on PBS, and it's 17 or 18 we're sad. we're in years yeah we've done 17 years 17 and, uh, years very, um, very proud of that and and it's not just a cooking show it really is an educational show and you bring in amazing guests and many of them uh, ha happen to be my clients as well so we share some friends um, right. the, um from your show and you actually get to learn and we love watching that and i loved what you have done now is pivoting to bring that experience to everyday people at home. So uh, right. give us a little bit more more of a path how we can be involved and join you to cook with you. Awesome. And how that and how does that lead into the initiative that's going to happen on Sunday? Oh, but you are actually giving a sneak tease tomorrow with Guy Ferrari first. Oh, is it today? Yeah. No, today, today six. Today. Today, today at six p.m. I'm cooking live with one of my great buddies, uh, Guy Fieri. Fieri. He he's corrected me fifty thousand times how to say his name. I'm like, dude, I'm Chinese. Come on, Sorry. get over it. Sorry, Guy. <laughs> Fieri, I, it's okay, dude. You're Chinese too. That's all right. Uh, so Guy and I are cooking together. The the um, uh, I don't know if you're old enough to to remember the Jerry Lewis telethon, right? That was that twenty four hour telethon that Jerry Lewis did. Right, yeah. and that raised millions of dollars, and um, for muscular dystrophy. And I remember as a kid in Dane, we used to watch that. So I, I had that idea. I says I want to do a chefathon, but I'm not going to do it for 24 hours. Although it's morphed, we're calling it COVID chaos because COVID, COVID is making you pivot left and right, sometimes for good, sometimes for bad. And so I had it all ready to go Sunday, but then Guy had a conflict because everyone's busy, COVID chaos. So instead of him club uh, being my closer on Sunday. He's now cooking with me today at six o'clock live. I sent him a cooler of stuff. 
We're going to be on my Instagram, so please come to, to Ming Tsai's Instagram, and at, at 6 p.m., you can hit it, and you'll see Guy and I cook. We each have the exact same ingredients. He'll make a dish his style, and he's got salmon and beef and, 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 and vegetables and stuff. I have mine. We're going to start with a cocktail. He has a great Santos tequila. We'll do that. It's a good 40-minute show. That's today. Then everything, again, was going to be Sunday. Since we last spoke, COVID chaos part two. Jose Andres, who literally is our hero of all hero chefs. He's fed millions and millions of people. He's supposed to be my opener. So let me first finish the closer. So instead of Guy, I got David Ortiz. So that was a great substitution, right? I mean, I love Guy, but I love Big Poppy too. So Big Poppy and I have cooked together before. He's He literally is the cleanup, literally, figuratively too. <laughs> and so he's going to be now the guy at 720 on Sunday. So we're doing this 4 to 8 p.m. cook-a-thon live on Instagram. It's now a surprise guest starting us off because Jose Andres just got called oh. away to be with the king and queen of Spain on Monday. So yeah. I'm like, okay, Ming or King, Ming or King. So he went King, uh, not Ming. I'm like, really? Come on, he's going to be King for a long time. And so, I mean, respect to Jose. He's, he's fed. And, you know, and I, honestly, the reason, you know the only reason I'm I think he should just go on IG Live with the king with you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You sign. Ni hao tzu ming. Yeah. Let's move on. yeah so anyway, so, so Jose. So now, Jose Andres is going to come live with me tomorrow at 6. Oh, so now we have two pre-teasers. So you, guys, actually, I actually love it because it brings more awareness. And, and yeah. because, as you know, we talked about this. I, I embrace the internet. I embrace the technology that we have. And I, I, I champion the marketing aspect of how to use the platform to really benefit. Yeah. And, and right now, what, what I love the most is seeing people who used to just cook on TV, making it accessible for us to watch you cook at home. So it's the intimidation yeah. actually... It's gone, and we all starting at a common place. And I love this yeah. concept of sending the boxes of ingredients to yeah. the people you're going to be cooking with. And this is all for Family Reach. This is yeah. the purpose of raising money for Family Reach. Tell us a little bit about Correct. that that so, organization. Let, let me first let me first finish the lineup, and then I'll tell you about Family okay. Reach. <laughs> so so now Sunday, 4 p.m. We have a surprise guest that we're going to announce, followed. At 4.40 by Reese Witherspoon, our we mutual are. friend. Reese is unbelievable. And again, through Jose, I got to meet Reese because Jim Toth is Reese's husband, who is down in the Bahamas with me. We were both cooking with Jose after the hurricane. And Jim is such a great guy. I call him Jimbo. He actually just started Quibi. Quibi is an amazing show. new platform, amazing right? Amazing platform. 10-minute HBO quality shows. It's free that. And I had a show working with him called Dumpling Dreams. I was going to travel the world and see all the dumplings of the world. I still want to do that. It's just that you can't travel the world. So that's on hold. So after Reese, we have Amanda Freitag, awesome chef in New York, followed by Arun Sanchez, one of the best Latino chefs we have in this country, in the world. Uh, then Paris Hilton, uh, it was super sweet. I met her recently. She is so nice. Go we ahead. have so much fun with Paris. Oh, I, I loved her. We did a show together, and I've seen her cooking show. She does a cooking segment on YouTube. You guys, you guys. Oh, I saw her. I saw her make lasagna. It was hilarious. <laughs> oh, no, she's awesome. Oh, shit. Oh, I, I got it. She's, she's fantastic. Yeah, I she's that. And then, then, then after Paris is Big Poppy. So Big Poppy is going to be the last person cooking. And then we actually have... Um, Ben, the bass player from Imagine Dragons. Wow. So he's going to make a dessert with me. So we have a huge lineup. So, And I actually think everything happens for a reason. Everything, it's yeah. Having aware. And, and the fact that I get to have you here today has a lot to do with making sure that awareness for Family Reach program. Because you know, we, we, we never knew each other before. And then for the right. purpose of truly for me to, to, to show gratitude of what you have done for me and influence for me, I just reached out and thinking, there's no way he's going to text me back. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Dude, you're more famous than me. You're you side. Come on. I absolutely. Say, I literally my. I literally went, oh my God, mean tags back. Yeah, but for the record, for those that don't know, you should know, you size a hell of a cook, right? He has a cooking show. He he outdoes me. He has a cooking show in Chinese and in English, right? I just go watch his, he, he's visiting Taipei. You didn't go back to Taipei for what, 20 years or something? A long time? So yeah, he goes Chinese. back and then you show all of Taipei. So check out you size cooking show too, guys. And it's um, funny so because the very last episode, the location where I'm at happened to Mr. Main size neighborhood. I couldn't believe that we used to. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, Ronailu. Ronailu Sanduan is, is a neighborhood in Taipei that my grandparents, Yay and I, lived in. 
And that was literally a block away from you, Cy grew up. It's a small world. And I went Crazy back world. and when I went back and filmed the people who still have salt on that street. So we know we ate from we probably ate the same dumplings growing oh, up. Oh hundred percent. No, and the same tofu, right? The tofu <laughs> down the street, that way. That way. Oh you know what? I, right? I, I have the craziest chills because it's it's crazy how how our path have crossed. And I'm, I'm so grateful yeah. and thank you for, for doing this. And and tell me a little bit more about family. Yeah, let me tell you about Family Reach. So Family Reach um, is the only national charity in this country that financially helps families dealing with cancer. So if you can imagine you have a son and daughter with cancer, that's the worst news any parent would ever hear, period, right? Because it's your son or daughter. And, and, and just almost as bad as your wife or your husband have cancer, right? But someone in the family has cancer. Because of the financial toxicity, we call it, if you get cancer, unless you're, if you're not in the 1%, there's a great chance you're going to be broke, if not even broke, evicted from your place. And, and the very blunt reality is the poorer you are, the higher chance that you're not going to survive cancer. And it's so ironic, but COVID is bringing exactly that to light, that a medical emergency causes a financial emergency. And we are seeing it today. So the story that we've been saying at Family Reach is now everyone, unfortunately, has to live it. But can you imagine having cancer right now during COVID and you try to get your chemo and going to these hospitals and, and you're already immunocompromised? It's a complete nightmare for these families. So I've been proudly with Family Reach for the last 10 years. And I do this cooking live event. Uh, we've raised over $7 million for Family Reach through this event, through food. Right. But that's different. That's at the risk Carlton, at a beautiful hotel. People gather, we cook, we do, we raise hands, we raise money. We can't do any of that. Hence the creation of cooking live cookathon. And so uh, one thing that's, again, that whole kindness curve I'm talking about, it's amazing how kind people have been. Uh, Mark Benioff, my buddy who, who, who is the creator of Salesforce also smartly bought time magazine he, he's a presenting sponsor and he got us hooked up with time and, and with, with Edward, the, the, the uh, editor in chief. And that's been a huge relationship. We have B&W Watercrest, right? They're, they're the healthiest vegetable grown in this country. They're a presenting sponsor. And, and we have, you know, B-Bold Bars from Stacey Madison, who started, you may know, Stacey Pita Chips. That's her claim to fame. She's, she has this great new bar out there. It's peanut butter and almond. Uh, it's like a power bar. It tastes better than a Snickers, but better for you than a power bar, right? So wow. it's really cool. Um, and so, we, so all these people are stepping up. And, and our hope is with this cookathon because there's obviously it's a fundraiser, but with with the reach of the Paris's and Reese's and all these chefs we have, you know, if if ten percent of the people ate, each gave five bucks, we're gonna we're gonna raise a lot of Absolutely. money. Absolutely, that's, that's that's a be bold. They're really they're freaking delicious. I I do not work for them just for the record. I don't make any of these problems. I just well, like them because they're delicious. This show is not a sponsor show, guys. Not yet. So if you're out there interested, in yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, maybe I'll get be bold to sponsor any you. Any size, any size, <laughs> any size. Yeah, yeah. There's only like one billion of a size. <laughs> Uh, so, anyway, so family, so family reach has such a, uh, a need, and and it's not just uh, in the beginning. Twenty years ago, when it started, uh, we called it. It was almost a band aid. We would send checks to make sure the family didn't get evicted. We would send checks directly to the landlord or to the car company or to the credit card to make sure their credit get. But now we're morphing into a whole financial package, right? There's a financial treatment plan that we, in this program. We need to educate people because when you hear you have cancer. You hear nothing else. It becomes Charlie Brown, wah, 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 wah. You hear nothing. And people hand you stuff and like, you know, you're going to get this financial problem. You don't, you don't hear any of that. And then two months into it, because you stopped working because you had to take your four-year-old to treatment and your husband's working, your income's been halved. And if your income's been halved, uh, before you know it, the mortgage or car payment piles up, you match your credit card, and that's, that's when disaster happens. So what we're trying to do as Family Reach is get ahead of that. Teach people that the first thing you do is do not max out your credit cards. Mm -hmm. The second thing you do is you don't have to pay the hospital full, right? People just say, if I don't pay, they're not going to see my kid. That's not the case. They have a law. It's your right. You don't have to pay. So there's all these tricks of the trade on how you can help get ahead of that. Because once disaster hits, it's so hard to get out of that. And once, and you know, and I got so involved because I got to meet this single mom, Raquel, um, who had a, still has a story ends up great, Michaelo. 
Michaela was two years old at the time. He had cancer at one. He got through it. She has single mom. She had enough money. They were fine. It came back. And when cancer comes back for a child, it's always two to three times worse. This time, she had no more money. They lived in a homeless shelter for over a year while Michaela was getting chemo and radiation. I mean, just, just think of that picture right there. I've never lived in a homeless shelter. I hope I never will. But to have that plus your son is going through that is ridiculous. And worse is the oncologist told Raquel that your son needs a bone marrow transplant to live. But unfortunately, because of your sanitary conditions, the homeless shelter, we cannot administer or won't stick. Sorry. You cannot tell them I'm sorry. Your son's going to die if there's a cure. That's when family stepped in and says, baloney, here is your apartment for a year. You take care of Michaela. We got you. And this kid I see once a year at my cooking lives. I, I won't see him this year, unfortunately. He gives me the biggest hug. He's 13 and healthy and strong. And, and I know I directly helped save this kid's life. And that's, there's nothing, there's no gift better than that when you know that through food, through your metier, your passion, that you can help other people. Well, it's incredible and it's so important. And there's one other message out there that, that we can't forget, yes, COVID is what's present right now, but if, if the, the different effects that happens. And you know, I got to talk to Project Angel Food last week about the, the people affected with with HIV and the elderly yeah. people who are still sick yeah. that still needs help. So the, the help, that just look around you. We all need kindness. We need all need support. Yes. And just b being able to be here and, and give a little bit of awareness to Family Reach is, is an honor to do so. And I thank you for allowing me to do that with you. Oh, and, please. and I want you guys out there, please make sure you tune in and make sure you donate. It's very, very easy. I believe you just go on Vimo. You can just send. You can donate Venmo now. We the Instagram now has a donate app. So during the Instagram live feed, you can just donate five dollars, guys. We don't, you know. And if we everyone know, donates five dollars, ten dollars. That would be a you, huge donation for us. You guys out there, you're getting your know, check of twelve hundred and fifty dollars per person. Take that one dollar from that check from the government, put it yep. back to where it really matters and really help kids and help people with cancer. You're going to reach that goal, and I will be there watching you and support you any way I can. Thank I, you. I, and I thank you so much for doing that because at this time, a lot of people, uh, we go through it differently. A lot of people get sad and they close down. In fact, you yeah. have turned this to a moment of awareness, even even more so than just having an event that, that right. local people get to attend. And you actually now are spreading into a global level. And I, that, I think, is it truly is the, the silver lining in this because more people yeah. will ever know about this now. And and Reese and all these other people, thank you guys so much. And that makes me so yeah. proud to be part of the community because, you know, with our business, you know how it can be. It's a very competitive yeah. deal. And I got to see over the last eight weeks how the restaurant people talk to each other, encourage each other, and support each other, and finding ways how to get back to normal altogether. And that's the only way. Solidarity yeah. is the only way. And along with that, and you mentioned kindness, and the one word that I've been living by, and I keep saying here now is, uh, servitude because we should be service yeah. piecing people and the gratitude that comes back from doing that the servitude it will keep you up every day it'll make you smile every day you'll put positive involvement back to your own body 100 uh, percent. Just... i mean i so agree with you si. and you know the one thing people ask me all the time what can we do how can we help well there's two ways to help in your neighborhood you just mentioned it you have older people in your neighborhood yes go check on them Go say, let me go buy groceries for you, right? And if you don't have the money, that's okay. They'll give you the money, but go. they they can't go to a grocery that's store, true. right? It's too dangerous, right? If you're over 75, you should not be going out, period. There's definitely old people in your neighborhood. That's how you can help, right? Reach out. And, and that little bit of kindness, I mean, go. you don't know, but that person might have been literally five minutes away says, I'm done. I'm out of here, right? You just don't know. But just imagine, there's so there's millions of people like that right now, right? And so you can help. You don't have to have a foundation to help. You just exactly. got to help one person. If everyone in this country does one, one act of kindness today, that's 350 million acts of kindness. That's pretty it's good. Incredible. That's a great day, right? So that's the first thing you can do. The second thing you do is the restaurant industry is always the industry that steps up. We're talking about Katrina. We're talking about 9-11. We're talking about Boston bombing marathon, right? We as chefs and restaurateurs always step up. We are the first there 
the California fires, Jose Andres, World Central Kitchen. We are there in the forefront before FEMA. We are there feeding people because firemen, policemen, Amazon, everyone needs food. And everyone that just lost their home for whatever the disaster was, they need food and they need it today. They don't need it in a week. If you don't get them water within two days, they perish, right? It's not, oh, I'll get to you in a week. No, they need it now. So my point, help your restaurants, because chefs and restaurants have always helped the entire country in times of need. Absolutely. This is our time of need. It's so sad, right? We just, you don't want to see these restaurants go, right? No. So, sorry. Um, the one thing you can do, buy gift certificates. Buy gift certificates. Just go to your favorite restaurants. As much money as you can afford, buy those certificates, get cash in these restaurant people's hands, so then they could possibly survive through it because you're going to go back there and celebrate. And you've been already celebrating these restaurants. So help us out, guys. We, we, we need it. We really need it. And I know, I know by the type of people that in the food industry I get to watch, guys, when we come back to where we can call the new normal, it will be the most amazing celebration. It will come yeah. back in tenfold. Oh, my God. We know the that. The amount now. of champagne I'm going to be drinking. <laughs> oh, my God. We better go to France right now. There won't be enough champagne for me. I mean, I would, I would travel there. I would be there with you. I would champion next to you because I am so proud to be able to, to, to be part of this community. And 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 I have to say, even though I have a, you know, I cook and I always say I play a chef on TV, and I always feel like I'm not a good chef. <laughs> but but what what has given me the, the the two merging of the platform of being on reality TV and hosting different shows in Asia and in the food industry and in fashion. It's the first time I see all three of those things collide together to do something great, to be able to have a purpose. And part of the initiative for Let's Talk, and I have to thank you for this, is that for every guest that says yes to come on the show to talk to me, we donate 500 masks to first responders. And thus oh, far fantastic. today, we have raised over 100,000 masks that has gone to the VA hospital. Oh, good for you, man. And it's little that we do little, little things that we can do. And I can tell you guys this, I have a box of masks next to my, my, my door when anybody UPS, whatever service. I, when I hear people outside, because I have a little alarm that goes motion detector, I run out there and see if they need a mask. And that brings so much joy and happiness to people. And yeah. it, it's like you said, it's an act of kindness. It gives you back so much more. So, guys. Oh, it comes back a hundredfold. 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 And so, guys, tomorrow, um, tonight, tomorrow, and then they say you get three days of chef being side. Come on, three days. So, make sure you guys get on there watch spread the word and donate because that we need to help the, the family reach and we also need your support in the food industry because you yep. know the first place you're going to go when you can go anywhere it's go out to eat with your friends and family we need to make sure yeah. that we leave we it's not bowling my first place is not bowling it's just not <laughs> it's just not <laughs> i like bowling <laughs> but but it's not the first place i'm going well thank you thank you thank you chef ming and we'll we'll yeah. talk your your friends for life and i am so we are for this time and i will I, I, we will continue talking to see what I can do to continue to bring awareness to, to the community you. out here. You and Boston, I mean, I'm on the West Coast and together the two sides can make a little bit of difference. I am yeah. glad to be part of the side family with you. Yeah, likewise, dude. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Yes, yeah. she 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 Always peace and good eating there, you side. Yes, and I will see you soon. Guys, that was the, one of the most rewarding conversations I have with anyone on this show thus far. Um, I know I have lots of guests in the, in the last 10 weeks have inspired me so much, but this amazing chef, Ming Tsai, who has been in front of television for 30 some years, and for me to look at, and I watch and mirror and know because he can do it, I can build a confidence and do it as well. And now if I can in any way to help to, so people are aware of the fundraiser that he's doing, I will do everything I can. So for you guys who are tuning in, I see a lot of you guys are watching today. I really encourage you to go to Mean Size Instagram and follow. If you don't have the means to donate, at least just be there for the spiritual support. We need this for the cancer victims out there. And like he said, reach out to your community, help the restaurants around you. Every dollar matters. If you can just share some of your money that you got from the from the government, that everybody I know is getting a check for for to, just to help start the industry. Well, take that and if you can, only if you can, a dollar a person would make a huge difference in this industry and for all the people who need it. Thank you guys so much again. I am so blessed and privileged to be here here to speak to you guys every day. Thank you guys so much again, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.